All right, guys, so yesterday Daniel posted this in the uh, BRICS uh, Facebook community. Um, and I took a bit of a look at it to see how the author of this website had done that layout. And I'm not sure that they've used um, the best techniques. I wanted to just look at a way of doing this. I'm going to look at this website and show you what I mean. Um, so what they've done is used a grid layout. And you know, all this flashy sort of stuff here. Now these aren't just image elements. There are some animations. I'm not even going to look at that. But if we look at the actual layout here, using our Chrome DevTools, we'll see if we get to that there. They actually used a grid. Um, and that grid there, you can see the alignment there. Um, you've got some overflow where it says the economic. You've got some different spacing between the networks of and the image than what you've got in the top image. It doesn't really look like the best fit for grid for me, and I'll show you why. If I pick one of these words, so I'll pick economic, and I'm going to add some letters to that, add an extra C, maybe two extra Cs. See, now the whole layout is broken. We've got all this extra spacing here. We've got a space on the left-hand side now. So just by adding a couple of letters, I've broken the layout. And that's because of the way grid is very rigid in how it defines the 2D layout. Um, I think this is actually a better use case for flex and have these images here actually scaling horizontally to fit within the space. Um, so many, many ways you can do this. And this is just an observation. What they've done works for them with the... Um, text that they've used, the boxes they've used, so this is not saying they've done it wrong, this is just saying if you were going to advise someone to do this, um, to have some flexibility in it, I would probably use flex. So let's head over and actually look at how we might do that. Alright, so starting with the blank editor here, I've just got a single section with a container. Let's set the container width of that to be a little bit smaller, so it's similar to what we're working on. So 900 to what we're looking at with that uh, Facebook uh, reference site. Maybe that's even too big, so I make it 800. Uh, so 800 wide container. All right, so we've got a single container. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some, um, make that's on flex already. Uh, we want that to be a vertical column, and we want to put some row gap on this. So I'll just space this on say 25 pixels for our row gap. Um, and that's pretty much going to give us our spacing vertically between our um, rows. Now inside that container I'm going to add a block which is pretty much a div set to 100% so it just saves us having to set that. I'm going to call that our row. And on that row I'm going to create a new class I'm using my BEM methodology here, so I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call that heading uh, inline image. That'll do, won't it? So that'll go, that's our block, so that'll be for the row. Uh, actually, I'll make it a row. So makes sense. Heading inline image row. There okay, you go. I'm going to create that. I just copied that to the clipboard, by the way, because I'm going to create some elements on that. So for that row, we want to make sure that it's a row. Uh, we want to set our cross axis to be in the center, so that it aligns things vertically. And we want a column gap to match the uh, same gap we put on the uh, container's uh, row gap. So that's pretty much what we have for a row. Um, I think that's all we need. Now I'm going to add inside that, I'm going to add a heading element and I'm going to add a div which I'll put my image in and the reason I'm going to add a div for my image is because uh, if you just add an image element here uh, Flex doesn't always calculate properly for some reason so inside that I'm going to add my image there's my image there, I'm going to pick an image and make that uh, this first beach one Okay, and we don't need it to be large for this, so I'll just make it 300. All right, so there's our bones. Now, what we need to do is uh, make some uh, elements for these, some element classes. So if you're a heading, 
we want to make a element of the heading inline image row underscore underscore and we'll call that heading okay and on that we don't have a way in this UI for setting our no wrap so I'm gonna have to do that through the CSS here so root and that's going to be white space I think we need a hyphen there no wrap we don't want this text to wrap around okay now what else do we want to do on there we want to set the topography on that let's say start with say 60 pixels that's nice and big okay now that's pretty much all we need on that for the moment now on the div here uh, we want to set the so we need a uh, another class for that so we're going to call that no image row we're going to call this image wrapper okay and on that uh, what we want is it's set to be flex we want to set our flex grow to one so it fills the space so you can just see there it's just fill the available space now and on our image i'm going to create a element for the image and on that image we want to set some properties of that so we want to go into i think just the layout Set the width to 100%, so it now fills in that space that it's grown to. And we want to set a height on this to be, uh, let's say, uh, make that 100 pixels for now. Let's see how that looks. That looks okay. It looks similar to what we were looking at before. Maybe 120 pixels high. Whatever it works for you. Um, and let's just do a couple of little things here. So let's put a uh, border on that or, or a um, border radius of say seven pixels give it a bit of rounding on it all right and there's our image set okay does anything else we want to do with that probably not okay so let's see what that actually looks like if we scale it actually we can probably do that from here so if we scale that down a bit so you can see that still fits get down to there and it drops down to single um, columns we've got no spacing so let's have a look at that so what we need to do is come back to our row and we put a 25 pixel column gap on that so let's make that a row gap as 25 as well all right now if we go down to a mobile size now we've got some gap between the heading and the image and that's pretty much that done all right now what we need to do now, let's make that heading a little bit bigger. Uh, so we get row heading, style, topography, make that say 80, 80 pixels. So you see how we made that nice and big, and this automatically shrinks to fit the available space, which is exactly what we want. So now for our next row, all we have to do is duplicate that, and maybe we'll just move this. Uh, we'll change that heading width there so it's a different heading and move the order of those around like that okay so now we've got two different headings uh, I'll put in here maybe just put some other words in there another text so what we're seeing is that this image actually scales to fit the available space, which I think is a better idea um, because now we can change this text and this automatically works. So let's do this third row, let's duplicate that. And again, we'll just move those around. Take the heading above the row, the, the div this time, the wrapper. Uh, and we'll call that another text we'll just add some letters to it so it's shorter um, and let's we'll pick some different images just to make it look like it's supposed to any old image we'll pick that one there on this one we'll pick another image maybe that one there okay i'm going to do a fourth row and i'll show you something even more cool so let's say we've got a short heading there and a long image let's duplicate that image did I just delete? I did. Dupl duplicate that image. 
and we'll set one of those above the heading. Now we've got one on the left and one on the right. Save that. Let's have a look. There we go. We've got a layout, kind of what we we're looking for in the other one. A big difference is now they are going to always stay aligned and they're always going to shrink to fit the available space. I'm just seeing here that's not quite doing what I expected. That's actually distorting the image for some reason. Let's have a look why that is. What did I set on those? I've got the image. So this is the beauty of it. I'll come back to here. And what did I set the object fill? I didn't. So I haven't set the object fill to cover. Now I've set the object fill to cover. Oops. Rookie mistake. I'm not on the class. Set the object fill to cover. And now they fit properly. Uh, so if I have a look now. And as I grow and shrink, oh, this editor doesn't look right. So let's go to my full screen view. The preview doesn't always look right. So we can see now the images are shrinking to fill the available space. And because it's cover, it's not distorting the images. It's exactly what we want. So the beauty of doing it using the classes like this is if we come back to uh, the editor let's say we decide look actually we want this heading to be a smaller font we go to the class style topography and make that 70 okay changes everywhere let's say we want the spacing to be less so we go to the class for the row Go to content, make sure we're on the row, and we change that to say 15 and 15, and we've got smaller spacing. Uh, go back to the container, change that to 15, and now we've got different spacing. So, using the BEM classes uh, gives us a lot more control of the layout um, and a centralized way of managing that. So this is probably the technique I would use um, if I was going to build that layout. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it is definitely not a grid layout. Uh, a grid layout would be where all of these align. So this, this edge here would align with either a gap, so align with one of these uh, ends of one of these up here or with the top image. So the grid's more for me about doing fixed layouts, whereas this is a very fluid layout. Um, so we get the space being filled correctly. So anyway, that's my view. So I hope this is making sense and I hope you like this kind of thing. If you do, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thank you.